are listening to Lighthearted, the official podcast of the United States Lighthouse Society. My name is Jeremy Dontremont. Welcome. My co-host today is Cindy Johnson, the best lighthouse volunteer in the state of Arizona. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> That's saying a lot. Hi, Jeremy. <laughs> Hi. Well, there's Lake Havasu. I think they have some uh, fake lighthouses there, so they might have some keepers. Right? Okay, there you go. Sure. Yeah. So, so you do have some competition, but you're the best. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Today is February 26th, 2023, and this is episode 214 of Lighthearted. In a few minutes, we're going to listen to a conversation I had with Ken Ingersoll, who is a lighthouse keeper in New Brunswick, Canada, and uh, is very involved in the preservation of Swallowtail Light Station. Before we talk about that, I just want to mention that today, we're actually recording this on, what is today, February 19th. I was at Portsmouth Harbor Lighthouse today, our local lighthouse here on the New Hampshire seacoast. Any regular listeners know that you and I are both very involved with that. Mm -hmm. This was my first time there since at least December. I had a foot operation in December. There was a storm on December 23rd that washed away most of the walkway, the 80-foot walkway that led out to the lighthouse. So it's largely gone. This was my first day today actually getting over there and seeing it since I'm now walking without crutches or a boot and everything. Um, It's pretty shocking seeing Mm -hmm. uh, that partial walkway there as it is now. Even though I I, I knew I'd seen plenty of pictures and heard about it, to see it in person is incredible. Yeah, I I agree because I had certainly seen pictures, video, but it it wasn't until uh, we were there. Well, you weren't there, but some of us were there for the Nell uh, tour that took place January 15th. And um, yeah, the pictures really don't prepare you for that feeling of um, taking those few steps up to the walkway and then uh, just it's just disappeared. It's just gone. Like you're looking into the abyss there. (laughs) Really, really strange feeling. It really is. It really is. But it was nice to be back at the same time. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I miss the the place. And uh, I'll just mention that there is uh, some talk going on there. I, we can't announce anything yet, but we're hopeful the walkway will, will be rebuilt, let's say, this year. But we can't say when exactly. But I right, sure right, hope right. we'll be able to make an announcement about that fairly soon. But Yes, uh, fingers crossed. Everything crossed. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, we're talking today about uh, a lighthouse, actually a couple of lighthouses in New Brunswick, Canada. Have you ever been to New Brunswick, Cindy? Actually, uh, yes, but I haven't been to the coast at all. So uh, 20-something years ago, I, w- I was on a road trip up through Maine and then into New Brunswick and to Fredericton, which um, turns out I didn't know this. Uh, maybe I did at the time, but looking it up recently is actually the capital um, but it was a little before Christmas, and um, so it was really charming. It was just a really beautiful little city and, you know, decorated Christmas and snow, and so we had a nice a nice little visit, but I have yet to be, um, I have yet to get over to the coast. Yeah. I've only been on some of the coast of New Brunswick, so I haven't been to Fredericton, but mm-hmm. Chaya Seal Island uh, that we're, we talk about in today's interview, because Ken is a keeper there, uh, is an amazing place, so the nesting puffin colony and rare turns and so forth. So I, I did a puffin cruise there some years ago. Yeah, and, that sounds uh, pretty yeah. incredible. And Campobello Island is a, is a great place, uh, part of New Brunswick. It's just across the bridge from Lubeck, uh, Maine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so with a couple of lighthouses on Campobello, a really good place to visit. So anyway, so that's our subject today. Uh, so Cindy, please help me tell our listeners about Swallowtail Lighthouse and today's guest, Ken Ingersoll. Sure, Jeremy. Grand Manan is a Canadian island in the Bay of Fundy, about seven miles east of West Quaddy Head in Lubeck, Maine. Swallowtail Lighthouse was built on a peninsula at the northeastern corner of the island in response to a number of shipwrecks. The peninsula was an important location for vessels coming into North Head Harbor or navigating around the northern end of Grand Manan. The lighthouse began service in 1860 and is one of the oldest wooden lighthouses still in operation. The light station was automated and de-staffed in the 1980s. In 1992, the property, except for the lighthouse itself, was sold to the village of North Head. The keeper's house was run as a bed and breakfast for some years, and then in 2012, the property was turned over to the village of Grand Manan. A community group called the Swallowtail Keepers Society has a long-term lease to care for the light station. 
The light remains an active aid to navigation maintained by the Canadian Coast Guard, and the interior of the lighthouse has been converted into a museum. Visitors also get to climb to the Lantern Room for a spectacular view, and there's a welcome center and gift shop staffed by students and volunteers. Last year, the Swallowtail Lightkeeper Society kicked off a $300,000 fundraising campaign to restore the lighthouse tower and the keeper's house. Marine biologist Laurie Murison and her husband Ken Ingersoll spearheaded the initial fundraising for the Swallowtail Keepers Society and the formation of the museum and the tower. Ken Ingersoll is now the volunteer keeper for the society. Uh, he's also a volunteer keeper for Long Eddy Lighthouse, also on Grand Manan, and he's one of the country's few remaining keepers uh, still working for the Canadian Coast Guard at Machias Seal Island Light Station. I had a great talk with Ken via Zoom recently, so let's listen to that conversation now. I'm speaking today with Ken Ingersoll, who is a keeper at Machaya Seal Island in New Brunswick uh, for the Canadian Coast Guard. He's also the volunteer keeper at Swallowtail Lighthouse on Grand Manan in New Brunswick. Thank you so much for being with me today, Ken. It's my pleasure. Great to have you. I want to talk mostly day, today about Swallowtail, about your association with Swallowtail Lighthouse, but we'll talk, we'll talk about Machaya Seal Island as well. But first, a little bit about you. Where, where are you from originally? I was born on Grand Manette. You were? Okay. Yep. Born and raised. Yes, absolutely. Uh-huh. Yep. And yep. Uh, and lived there, uh, well, aside from the time you're on Machaya Seal Island, uh, Grand yeah, Manette is well, still your home, right? Well, I, yeah, I lived uh, I lived for a year in Ontario. I went there for uh, Guelph. Uh, my wife uh, uh, did her master's and mm-hmm. I just moved up there for a year with her and then moved back. Um, and I spent uh, a lot of my early years at sea. I okay. uh, worked on deep sea salvage tugs for a while. Then I, I worked on uh, foreign seismic vessels for a while. Yeah, then uh, I had a, a serious back injury. Uh, which got me off the water. So I come home and I guess uh, the next best thing to migrate to, if you can't be on the water, is lighthouses. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, that makes sense. And you probably know that has some historical uh, precedents because I know there were a number of keepers over the years, certainly in, in this country and I think in Canada too, who had injuries of one kind or another on ships or war injuries yep. or whatever it yep. might be. And a lot of them did exactly what, what you did. So absolutely, absolutely. Not, not an uncommon thing. So if I could just, just, I just want to make sure I've got this right. Uh, if you could clarify this for me, I understand you are employed uh, by fisheries and oceans or uh, Canadian coast guard uh, as a keeper at Machaya seal Island. And you are uh, a volunteer as the keeper at swallowtail. Do I, do I have that right? You do. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. So let's talk about Swallowtail for a while here. First of all, and I know it, we could you could probably take all day answering this question, but could yeah. you could you tell me some of your duties as a keeper at Swallowtail? What do you what do you do there? Uh, for Swallowtail, um, of course, it's the whole station. Obviously, it's not just the lighthouse. It's the keeper's house. It's the uh, we actually have two boat houses. Uh, one's down by the keeper's house on the peninsula. And the other one, uh, which actually came from a lighthouse in Ross's Island, uh, that's at the top of the hill before you come down the stairs and across the bridge. So uh, my duties there uh, are basically to make sure that everything is in good running order, anywhere from electrical to carpentry to plumbing. And if I can't repair it, obviously, to to find someone who can and, and have it repaired. I do pick away a little if the foghorn has an issue. Um, I can troubleshoot to a point. But uh, help is only a phone call away, you know, with the Coast Guard. I know the guys. I know their their numbers personally. The light's the same. You know, if there's an issue with the light, um, I can give them a shout. And uh, usually they either come by helicopter or come the next day by, uh, by, by the ferry. But it's basically to make sure that the grounds are in, in, in good order and, and stay in good order. Sure. What kind of optic is there at Swallowtail now? Um, in there, uh, that's an interesting story. Uh, I can go back a little. When we first got the light, it had a uh, an acrylic. Uh, it was called a T three hundred light with a halogen beam with a with a four bulb changer. Since then, since we got the new cupola, um, the Coast Guard uh, miraculously actually found the eighteen eighty eight BBT fourth order barrel lens. So that now come back home to Swallowtail. So two years ago, three years ago, we put that back in the lighthouse. So it's a, so it's on watch again. 
That so, is that is so fantastic. What a great that story was a thrill, that is. man. It was just uh, I remember my yeah. wife and I when uh, when the supervisor Jamie McGaver called us and said that uh, he was quite sure they found the uh, the original light for Swallowtail and would we be interested in it? And it was just like you know, uh, yeah. So, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would so you be that, interested? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's then of course he knew we would be, you know, and uh, and we have a new LED light, and it's uh, it's just gorgeous. It really is. Yeah. I'll bet it is. Yeah. I want to get back to that in a few minutes. We'll talk a little bit more about the the change in the lantern and that stuff. But let's let's go back in time uh, to the beginning of a lighthouse at Swallowtail. Could you just say a little bit about why a lighthouse was needed there in the first place? And I like to say uh, personally that it had a, a lot to do with emotion. And the reason I say that, Jeremy, is that in, uh, in 1856, uh, we had a horrific gale and uh, the uh, sailing bark the uh, Lord Ashburton was anchored actually in St. John, New Brunswick, 40 miles away. And uh, she broke both of her anchors free and uh, the wind, the northeast, it was a big nor'easter, blew her down the bay. Eventually she lost her sails. She was demasted in the hole and she come ashore and just be on the, the northeast tip of uh, Whale Cove, which we now call uh, Ashburton Head. Everybody died but three. It was a horrific crash. So that's what prompted the uh, the building of the, the lighthouse, which was built in 1859. A lighthouse or no lighthouse, it would never have saved the vessel. I mean, they they were helpless. The rudder was gone, the work, but that's the reason they built it. I know what you're saying. Uh, there's certain circumstances where you're certainly beyond the help of a lighthouse. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure the light has prevented many, many wrecks, though, oh, since it was built. absolutely. I mean, I have stories of, of a good friend of mine, and uh, I think it was... Uh, 2004 or 2005 was coming down from uh, what we call the head of the bay up around the St. John area in the wintertime and in a very modern boat with all the electronics, his feet up. It was blowing Norwest 30. Uh, it wasn't a comfortable trip, but he, it was the middle of the night and uh, bang, his boat started to leak and it was started to leak bad. And uh, in order to keep uh, his pumps running, he had to shut all his electronics off because it would have drained his batteries it just wouldn't keep up so uh, and uh, after you get all the lights it was it was pitch dark and he can still tell me and he looks up and saw a swallowtail blinking and he mm -hmm. said that was the most wonderful sight he ever saw and he <laughs> hauled her down towards swallowtail and let her and then uh, duck island which is just below it he saw that blinking and uh you know he knew he's home free you know it's just so you know you still hear those stories and yeah. if you see one person, you know, and, and he had four guys aboard the boat. And uh, yeah, so and I know you've heard these stories yourself, you know, and when people talk about why do we need lighthouses today because of GPS and all the, the modern aids to navigation. Yeah, you know, as long as everything's working, it's great. But the minute right. something doesn't work, you know, uh, on Graham and Ann, and I'll take it a little bit further, we have what we call the Mosquito Fleet. And we have probably 50 minimum 50 small dories and skiffs that do a lot of tide work in the summer, uh, picking dults, uh, periwinkles, et cetera. And they're all around the back of the island. Uh, it's you know, like there's tide work, so it's in the middle of the night, like a fog, doesn't matter, they go. And they don't have any electronics. The very most they would have would be uh, a handheld GPS or, or usually their phones, which usually the batteries run dead, you know, and, uh, and they rely, and I'm very fortunate to be, um, uh, a keeper of two lighthouses that have the lights and the horns both, mm -hmm. you know, so to me, that's quite an honor to, to have them. And yeah. that would be Swallowtail and Long Eddy. Okay. So, yeah, you mentioned Long Eddy. Uh, we hadn't mentioned that before. What is mm -hmm. your uh, association with Long Eddy light at this point? That was the same. Uh, the, uh, the Coast Guard, uh, the government actually uh, were, were getting rid of these lighthouses. And they're just looking to give them to people to, to take them over. It, it's the same as Swallowtail. They will look after the horn and the light, and we look after the structure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so we've done a lot of work with uh, with Long Eddy. It's a, it's a small box lighthouse. It was built in uh, 1966. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great little, it's something about that little lighthouse I really, really like. And, it's, uh, and we've cleaned up the grounds, and uh, I, I lost my wife in, uh, in 2001, uh, 2000, sorry, 21, and, uh, and I built a memorial deck. Uh, in her honor and it looks out to the west toward you guys and it's a wonderful spot for uh, for people to watch the sunset and basically turned it into a park but it's a but it's a working lighthouse and it's uh it's great uh that brand new helipad and yeah. it's uh yep yeah, and hopefully you'll get to see it when we come down this summer 
Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping uh, in October yeah. I'm going to be uh, going there with the U.S. Lighthouse Society group. For listeners who don't know, uh, Long Eddy is also on Grand Manan, but where 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 is it exactly on the island? It is. It would be actually the northwest uh, tip of Grand Manan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, by. It's only about seven miles, seven eight miles from uh, from me, from yeah. actually from West Wadi. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great what you've done there at Long Eddy. What a nice tribute to your your wife as, as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the tower at Swallowtail, the actual lighthouse tower. It's among the oldest wooden lighthouses that are still standing from the 1800s in Canada or the U.S. Uh, only a couple that I can think of uh, certainly in the U.S. that are older than that. Maybe there's some in Canada. Well, there's uh, Head Harbor, right? Yes. Which is yeah. is older, I believe. It is. It is, yeah. yes. Yeah, but yeah. But Swallowtail is old for a wooden lighthouse, so I would think it's very solidly built. Do you have any comment on the construction of that lighthouse? That's one of the first things I looked at. Remember, forget the first day that we actually got a key so we could go in. The Coast Guard still owned it, but I, I kind of I'm a little pushy that way. So I went in and and I looked up and I see these huge beams, and uh, it was very it's a post and beam construction, and all the lumber, of course, in his hand hewn, and and one of the things you notice are all the wooden pegs. You know how they all the the lumber's pegged together, and as you go up the lighthouse, of course, it gets smaller and smaller as you go to the top. But at the very top, the lath and plaster has been removed, so it gives you a great opportunity to see how it was actually put together. And one of the interesting parts of Swallowtail, and if you look at it, there's a little uh, jet that sticks out at the very top. It's an eight-sided lighthouse, but at the very top, it's only seven-sided. But when they when huh. they built they built the lighthouse in 1859, and they had to wait a year for the cast iron cupola to come from England. And when it arrived, they put it on the top and it wouldn't fit. So they actually had to cut. It would it fit, but the door wouldn't open. So there's no way they could get out on the parapet to do to do any uh, any maintenance. So they had wow. to cut the side out of the lighthouse. And uh, so, yeah, so it was kind of a, yeah, I guess an 1859 or 1860 boo-boo, so, uh-huh. so, which makes the tower unique. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, every does. people, uh, if anybody thinks a lighthouse is a lighthouse, they're they're crazy. There's oh, they all have their little stories and their little yeah, they sure do. Absolutely. Jumping ahead, I, I want to talk about some of the uh, human history there at Swallowtail. First of all, there was a tragedy I read about that happened in 1936. There, what what was it there, that happened? There was. Um, her name was uh, Lodi Foster. Um, she was the assistant keeper. Her husband Tom Foster was the uh, principal keeper. And he was actually um, filling in for a lighthouse keeper in uh, Southwest Head who was on vacation. Um, she went to light the light, uh, just coming dark, and um, sh- she had her uh, nightgown on, and she had two of her, two or three of her children with her. She lit the light, but it burned so cleanly she didn't realize it was lit. She tried to light it the second time, and it went poof. When she did, she jumped. It scared her. She spilled the paraffin all over her. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it ignited. Uh, she died three days, uh, two days later in the keeper's house. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. She had the presence of mind. As soon as she lit, she slammed the hatch. And of course, then the the, the floor was all copper. And uh, that's what saved the lighthouse. But it cost her her life. Wow. Yeah. To have the presence of mind to do that is pretty incredible. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hero to the end as far as save the tower. Yeah, no. yeah. Well, I often tell people when I lecture and so forth, lighthouse keeping wasn't as romantic as you think. Even uh-huh. at, you know, it was more dangerous at some places than others. But even at the the most uh, serene places, it could still be a difficult and dangerous at job. Church. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Any other stories about life there at Swallowtail that stand out for you? Lives of uh, keepers and families, anything like that? You know, it's, it's uh, been pretty straightforward. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention. It's, it's interesting growing up as uh, I used to run around when I was a kid. I remember we used to we used to put our hats over the uh, over the, uh, the the fog detector and on nice days and because the tourists would always be around. And we 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 get the foghorn blowing and, the, you know, and we get chased off the peninsula because that was the and. Uh, you know, it's uh, not a lot. I've been so busy and my wife and I were so busy. Uh, uh, bringing it back up to standard that uh, she was uh, she was the historian I was the guy that was on the on the peninsula working so uh, of course I knew the uh, it wasn't actually Grimmer uh, the last paid lightkeeper would have been his son Morrill. Okay. Um, 
just for kind of for the record, he was the last paid light uh, light keeper on on uh, Swallowtail. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask you about that because sources, mm -hmm. as you probably know, I guess it's incorrect. Uh, there are a number of sources that say the last keeper mm -hmm. when the light was automated in 1985 was Grimmer mm -hmm. Ingersoll, and so he was, but but uh, but his son stayed on. Okay, for about a year or two afterwards. And, okay, uh, he told me that personally. I assume those Ingersolls have some relation to you. No, um, actually, no, they, they don't. don't. They do not. No, no. Wow. Is Ingersoll a pretty common name in the area? It, it is. There's uh, there's North Head Ingersolls and there's middle of the island Woodridge Cove Ingersolls and then there's Seal Cove Ingersolls and there yeah and some were related to some were not. It's that family tree thing, right? It's uh huh. More of a bush. I don't what know. is the genealogy of that? Uh, your where'd your ancestors come from? Well, some of them uh, uh, they're Irish. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, my mother would be fifth or sixth generation green which is uh which we've been here a long time mm -hmm. and, uh, my, my dad's actually which he's from uh, lubeck maine oh yeah okay yeah so he is a dual citizen interesting mm -hmm. okay so yeah we have to, so we have ties to maine as well right let's uh talk about what's been happening lately uh with swallowtail there's an organization called the swallowtail keepers society yes what is yes. that how did it start that was formed in uh, 2008 um, on Earth Day, 2008, and it's when uh, my wife and I joined. Uh, there was a rumor that the uh, the village who owned uh, the keeper's house, uh, the boathouse, uh, the whole peninsula except for the tower, and it was up for sale, and uh, everyone got quite upset about that. So uh, we rallied and we went out. There was probably 80 people, and we cleaned all the old everything that was that was lying around we i think if i remember right it was 22 or 23 uh, half ton truckloads of, of garbage we took off that peninsula and uh, but we didn't stop there we wanted to we wanted to repair the house the house was in such disrepair a lot of black mold the plumbing was tore out of it it was and all the windows were leaking it was just horrible so so we took it on ourselves uh, actually the little boathouse the southern end was gone completely and uh, so we just repaired. And as we went, we had to become a nonprofit organization for donations. And, and that's kind of how it started. Uh, it was three years later before we actually got the tower, mm -hmm. before the, the Canadian Coast Guard signed the tower over to the village. And okay. then the village, we, uh, the, the uh, Swallowtail Lightkeepers Society, uh, were renting the property for 25 years. Okay. Both, uh, yeah, both um, Swallowtail and Long Eddy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was going to ask you about that. I wasn't quite clear on that that arrangement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And have all the buildings been restored? Since they then? have, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, they have. Any yeah. restoration projects uh, kind of lined up at this point? Or? Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. do. But, but it's, uh, the main tower has got to be reshingled. It's uh, the, the shingles from the research I can do, they're over 90 years old. And they just will not hold paint. I mean, it's just a, a waste of time. But now the the fastenings are all rusted off. The nails are gone. And we have a water ingress problem. Um, I was out uh, three days ago to check on the lighthouse and the ceiling on the second floor, which is lather and plaster. Some of it has dropped to the floor oh. because of the water. Yeah, we're, we're, we're serious. We, and, uh, you know, the, uh, the top of the lighthouse, uh, we've completely redid it it's all fiberglass now gel coated it's got the brand new cupola and uh but down along the sides jeremy it's still when the wind's blowing 50 60 it's it's still leaking and yeah. it's, it's and it's just got to be it's got to be uh reshingled mm -hmm. so, so i spoke with the, the the coast guard and they advised me there's uh they've worked with uh the historical uh society in canada to uh to put a a it's a, it's like a vinyl shingle that will pass their inspection uh, to be put on historical buildings, and it's very low maintenance. Uh, they've they've put it on three lighthouses already, the Canadian Coast Guard, and they've and it's it worked out really really well. So I've looked into that, and that's what we're planning on putting on the lighthouse. So yeah, uh, big job, big like yeah. half half a million dollars. So but it's worth every cent of it. But if we don't, you know what water will do to the wood. Absolutely. You know, we, we have to, we have to save it. So, yeah. so that's, that's the fundraising uh, project. Now we have the contractor, the coast guard's going to help us to the best of their ability. So we kind of got our ducks in a row. Now it's a matter of getting the capital to do it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. But it Thank sounds. You. Appreciate it. It's such a harsh environment, especially for a wooden structure like that. It, it really is, you know, it absolutely. You know, when I stop and think about it, and as you can see, the cables are, are on the, uh, the lighthouse. And, uh, and 18, it was 1868. It was built in 1860, 1868. Uh, the, the lighthouse was hit by two hurricanes. Um, the Saxby Gale was one. And uh, the, the original tower was built on a, on a wooden, I'm sorry, and the tidal wave scale, they called it. It was the two. And, uh, and the, the, uh, the original tower was built on a, with a wooden foundation. Mm -hmm. And after the second gale, um, the, uh, the new lighthouse with its big, heavy cast iron cupola was on an eight degree list. And they really thought it was going to fall on its side. Wow. And it stayed like that until, uh, until 1871 when uh, they must have got a bunch of money because they come down and they built the boathouse mm -hmm. and they, they did a bunch of work to the original keeper's house and they, they put the, uh, the uh, stone and mortar foundation underneath the lighthouse, straightened it up and put the, put the wires, the guide wires out. Uh -huh. and, they've there, and they've been there ever since. Yeah. yeah. So it keeps it steady and well, it, it does. It does. Yeah, yeah uh, keeps it level, but also, uh, you know, I imagined it possibly blowing away in a storm. It, you know, not... I've watched it a lot in the last 15, 16 years, and I, I go out, I've gone out a lot during storms, and I'll go out after a storm. And it depends on the prevailing wind. If you go up in the tower in the parapet, and you look down at the, and I always look at the cables, and mm -hmm. one day they'll be slack on one side and tight on the other, and two days later, it's just the opposite. And it goes with the wind and it's, uh, it's really, yeah, they're working They're You know, yeah. they're, I bet. Really yeah. 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 Have those and had to be replaced over the years? Um, they have been, I haven't gotten a lot of information. The guys here, um, uh, what's happened is, is a lot of the guys that have, uh, that, that have done that type of work have moved on. Not many of them are being replaced anymore. The in-house coast guard is nothing like it used to be, you know, 30 years ago. So it's difficult to get that information. Um, we inspect it regularly. Uh, the cables still seem to be fine. All the, the turnbuckles and everything are great. So mm -hmm. uh, well, I do keep an eye on it. And uh, and I, I've discussed it with the guys. And the minute one of them fails, uh, we'll I'll see about having them all replaced. Yeah. 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 But uh, okay. but I, I but I really can't tell you how long those uh, those cables uh, have been there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I was just just curious. Yeah. So to change the subject a bit, the one thing I read about that I thought was was quite intriguing was that there was a horror movie shot yeah. at the lighthouse <laughs> in was. 1996. Can you there tell was. me about yeah. that? Uh, it was called Hemoglobin. At the uh -huh. time. I believe it, then I think they changed the name to Bleeders, and I think it's had a couple of different names. Okay. But yeah, there was. Uh, um, I I wasn't involved in it or even involved in Swallowtail at the time, but I know that they did. They 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 filmed. Uh, they they changed the inside of the lighthouse and they changed the keeper's house and they used them. And apparently they were uh, these mutant people that lived underneath the lighthouse on the peninsula <laughs> in caves and yeah, it was just yeah yeah. So it's a true story. You're saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of exactly a big a Saturday night, right? Yeah. <laughs> Based on a true story. Yes. Uh, well, I wonder if that's possible to to see these days. Uh, I'm curious, I, but yeah, it's probably really terrible, though. Um, I actually, my wife and I watched it, and I enjoyed it. She did. Oh, really? it, uh, I guess what I liked about it is I knew so many of the extras that were in it. Uh -huh. know, yeah, I did. I kind of enjoyed it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can actually, you can get it. It's, uh, don't don't look for Academy Award money. <laughs> I wouldn't expect. You but uh, I'm. Step down a page. Yeah, I'm a movie buff, and especially I'm always seeking out light, you know, movies that have lighthouses. It's a, yeah, yeah, Rucker Howard was in it. He was Rucker the, Howard. Uh huh. Yeah, he was the star. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. he was a pretty big, pretty big name oh, for a while. He, he, he was. was. Yeah, yeah. One he of the stars of. Uh, he went whale watching with my wife, and uh, yeah, they they uh, met up two or three times. And, oh, cool. And, uh, yeah. yeah. His to me, his most memorable role was the movie Blade Runner. Yes, was, that was yeah. yes. It was he had some exactly. uh, great, some great scenes in that. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's really neat. So back to the the lighthouse and the the maintenance of the lighthouse. You touched on it before the changing of the the light, the putting back of the the Fresnel lens there a few years ago. Yeah. So the lantern or cupola was actually changed out at that time. That was that's actually kind of a funny story because my wife and I we just started working on the keeper's house and uh, and uh, and Lori had said to me, she goes, she's, we're, we're actually going to get the, uh, the lighthouse. She'd been talking to the village and, uh, and the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, and I smiled and I said, that has to go. And she said, what? I said, the cupola. It just, it has to go. Because all I can think of is shrunken head. <laughs> See, in the, in the late 70s, early, uh, late 60s, early 70s, the Coast Guard built a lot of these aluminum cupolas, which which are great. I mean, they certainly served a purpose. And uh, because they're finding a lot of these older structures were having problems supporting these heavy old, you know, the original cast iron cupolas. So the lighter, smaller, seven foot uh, cupolas, if you look at it really good, it just does not fit the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was my goal. And uh, so we started saving money and, and I talked to the Coast Guard and they sent me the set of plans for the Gannett Rock um, cupola, Mm -hmm. and uh, which I have here with me. So... Um, I went to the village and we discussed it and uh, it was a $60,000 price tag and uh, we had the money and uh, we went to our local fabricator who had never built a cupola before, but was really excited to do it. So uh, we used um, the plans and, uh, and, and checked with uh, the smaller cupolas to see how the vents were made, how the, how everything was done. And uh, yeah. And anyway, it was built at a, at the Dexter's Machinery here on Graham and Ann. And it's absolutely gorgeous. They did a fantastic mm-hmm. job. Coast Guard swapped it out for us with the helicopter and their crew. And uh, that was when they brought the Fresnel lens. And yeah, so it was a, it was a big day, very mm-hmm. big day. And now it, now it looks so uniform. It looks, yeah, yeah. So it should look with a large cupola. Right. Uh, Although I don't know. I, I know what you mean about it looking like a shrunken head, the old one, but there was something about it that made it unique, but I think you're right that it looks uh, the way it's supposed to look now. And if you look at the before that cupola, and it, it does, it looks so much like it did when it was original. Mm-hmm. And, and that was that was our goal. Yeah. Well, I yeah. haven't seen it up close yet, but seeing pictures of the the new lantern, it certainly you would never know that that's not a historic structure on there. No, you would not. You you yeah. no, you would not. The other the mm-hmm. other cupola is seven feet, and uh, this one's eleven. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a big difference. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that that's, that was really great that you got that done. And there's another lantern uh, or, or cupola, however you want to mm-hmm. refer to it, on mm-hmm. the grounds. Uh, what, what's the story yeah. behind that one? Yeah, that was, um, I got a phone call one day. We'd actually built a memorial deck for Elodie Foster. And uh, and uh, it's another way to kind of fundraise uh, people who are in love with, who really enjoy lighthouses and the, and the peninsula. Um, they, they will put up a plaque for a loved one who passed. And uh, yeah, and we, that was my wife's idea and it, and it worked out really well. But in the middle of all this, I got a call, call from the Coast Guard one day and says, hey, Ken, do you want another cupola? And I just said, well, yes, of course. So uh, it came from Duck Island, uh, Great Duck Island. Okay. Uh, yep. They, uh, they took the, the, what they did is that they put uh, an outside light and a tower and they took the top off the uh, the box tower there, and so they had the cupola, a spare one. Mm-hmm. So so I very quickly, my brother and I actually uh, we made uh, we made a uh, a platform for it in the middle of the of the uh, memorial deck, and the helicopter brought it over and set it in place. And mm-hmm. yeah, so I actually have a uh, a DCB thirty six in it. Oh wow! Yeah, and it's, I didn't realize uh, that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and that, that's the one that. Uh, According to the supervisor, it came from Gannett Rock. Oh, uh, so, okay. So it's in there. And, and and I thought it was a good opportunity. There are a lot of people who are terrified of heights, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got it set up so, you know, people can see and gives them an idea what uh, what it looks like, you know, yeah. on the ground. But, well, that's uh, great. Yeah. As for listeners who might not know, you say DCB 36, uh, just it's one of the types of uh, optics that is sometimes referred to as an arrow beacon kind of yes. uh, rotating light. Yes. So people get an idea of what it might look yep. like. But yeah, largely phased out, at least in yes. this country. There's only a couple left. Uh, still yeah, I think in operation. Got, we may have two. I know mm-hmm. one. Yeah, I think we have two left. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, just, uh, you mentioned Gannett Rock a couple of times, and I just want to touch on that. I have gotten to see Gannett Rock a couple of times on cruises. It's an incredible lighthouse, uh, off of Grand Manan, uh, offshore. Mm, yes. Power. And, uh, yes. our mutual friend, Chris Mills was, was a keeper there for a while and has written yeah, about it and so forth. He was. It's a, it's an amazing place, but it's a daunting, it's a daunting task to maintain it. So it's, it's pretty much abandoned. Has, it is. 
have you been involved in any talk about doing something about that? I know, again, I, I, you're talk, probably talking many, many millions of dollars oh, to even get, start um, there. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah, um, four, four years ago, Chris Mills and I were on Dan Rock. Okay. I, yeah, I, I set it up and he and I went with some friends and went ashore and up in the tower and, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, you would have to be a country to be able to afford to put that back. You know, they, I, I still believe they made a huge mistake in, uh, in 96 when they de-staffed it, but mm -hmm. they did what they did and it's over. Uh, but to yeah. bring it back would cost literally millions and millions and to keep it up. The upkeep is just, you know, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, it's a yeah. shame, but we yeah, can't it save everything. Uh, that's just the nature of things. But um, yeah, Chris uh, had just uh, been there on that trip uh, when we did a cruise. I did a cruise with him from Bar Harbor. Okay, yes. Where we yes. went near Grand Manan. And I think it was a short time before that, that he had gone. Yep. Don't get it. A friend of mine, yeah. I asked him and he has a lobster boat. And we got another friend who had a skiff and we all got together and away mm -hmm. we went. So it's great. Yeah. 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 And uh, Chris was, I know, quite emotional about visiting there after having been a, a keeper there and seeing what it's like now. Well, I took uh, a photograph of him actually and standing in the doorway and there was one in 1996 before he left. Yeah. And then the one. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I remember those. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. I remember seeing, I think the two pictures side by side. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's great. Uh, well, must have been uh, quite an experience going there. For sure. Um, yeah, so let's uh, talk a little bit about the tours at Swallowtail, public tours. Mm -hmm. Yes. What do people experience when they go there? Are there exhibits? Are there guided yeah. tours? Or how does how does all that? Yeah, um, that's uh, that was another interesting. When uh, we first started in the lighthouse, and it needed some work. It was dirty. It needed to be painted. It just yeah. And uh, my wife wanted to turn it basically into a museum, mm -hmm. and I didn't want it to be a museum. I wanted to keep it as a lighthouse as it naturally was. Well. It became a museum, uh, and uh, to, today I'm so pleased that it did. There's a lot of uh, placards in it. There's the whole history of the lighthouse, and actually lighthouses on Graham and Anne. There's uh, there's an, a beautiful little uh, uh, six six order Fresnel lens that Chris Mills gave me. Okay, it has the blinking pattern of swallowtail. It's uh, it's fantastic, and uh, and uh, some other exhibits. There's a uh, part of the fourth order. There's uh, there's a there's a a movie for people to watch uh, and all kinds of different traits of uh, things that we, that they would have used to build the lighthouse. Um, so it's a, uh, it went from, we used to do uh, uh, verbal tours. Uh, we had two students hired and I used to do a lot of them to now people can just uh, wander through the tower and uh, read at their own leisure and, uh, and get the information. Of course, it's in English and French both. So, yeah, so it's uh, mm -hmm. the inside of the lighthouse now is, is actually a museum. That's great. And to go back to the, the fundraising you talked about, you talked about the major restoration project that needs to be done. There was a, officially a fundraising campaign launched last year. Is that that's right? right? That's right. Yes. yes. Yeah. Is there a website people can go to if they want to make donations? Or There is. There is. Just uh, uh, Swallowtail Keepers Society. Mm -hmm. uh, and just you can go on that and it'll guide you. It'll take you wherever. Yeah. 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 Will, yeah. And uh, have you been doing fundraising events or? Uh, we have. We're doing actually doing a telephone on the uh, mm -hmm. the 19th of, oh, sorry, the 16th of April. Oh, uh, so we're, yeah. So we're kind of working toward that right now. So a we, telethon. Will that be on local television or will yes, that be? Yeah. CHCO. Uh, okay. St. Andrews. Yeah. Mm hmm. I was yep. wondering if it might be accessible online so people like, you know, in yeah, the US I believe, yes, better. it will be. It will be. Well, yes. Yes. Oh, well, neat. So, I'll have to watch for that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh huh. And let's uh, keep it on the back burner, but maybe we can have an event aside from the podcast interview we're doing now, but mm -hmm. to have a, we do occasional Zoom events for the U.S. Lighthouse Society for the public and often focus on a particular lighthouse in those events. So let's, let's, uh, Let's right. discuss that in the future. Absolutely. Maybe we can do something on Swallowtail. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just one more thing about Swallowtail. I want to talk for a few minutes about Machaya Seal Island, but uh, there's a resident volunteer keeper program at Swallowtail. Is that right? Uh, there is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. How, what's that uh, all about? Well, uh, people can apply. It's um, We have a questionnaire that has to be filled out. People can come and stay in the keeper's house and do tasks. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, They could be working at the gift shop. They could be doing a little painting, depending on your skill set. Now, I have uh, a fairly rigorous questionnaire to fill out. Um, One year, I had 14, I think it was 14 people, another 14, 13 were scared of heights. (laughs) And I wanted to paint the tower that year. Oh, boy. So I wound up with a nice water line, eight feet around the tower. Mm -hmm. And I vote that wasn't going to happen again. So, uh, so what we do is people that, and I want them serious about it to come and uh, where my position there as a volunteer keeper and then plus I work besides, right? So when you have people come who, uh, who don't have a lot of skills, it's, it means more of my time with them to, to chaperone, supervise, whatever. So last year where we've tightened it down a little bit, we had uh, two couples, three couples that came last year who were just fantastic. I give them a job to do the way they went, you know, and it's, it, it's great. So yeah. we do have it this year. If uh, the whole peninsula, I think, is pretty much going to be a uh, busy, busy area for, for construction. So mm-hmm. we won't be, uh, I think we'll probably have the lighthouse closed for the summer because obviously you can interact with uh with uh, falling shingles and hammers and stuff like that with people sure interact. so but we're not sure when we're starting yet yeah so, but you can go on our website and it, it's it's right there on swallowtail lightkeeper society and it, yeah. it talk and uh, you can click on the uh volunteer keeper program mm-hmm. and, uh, and all your information is there I actually know somebody who might be interested in applying for that. I got to tell him mm-hmm. about it and make sure he knows. We have, uh, we have two people actually that from Pennsylvania that have, uh, they've been here twice and uh, they were on Seguin. They were there. You're not talking about Tim, Tim Mount, are you? Tim, uh, Timothy, uh, they're from no, upstate talking, New York. No, somebody else. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's, and he and his wife, uh, Jack and Toby, they stayed. Uh, oh, Jack Graham and Toby. Yes, yeah. Okay. Great, I know yeah. them too. Yeah. 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 And uh, they've been here twice. This is our first mm-hmm. Canadian lighthouse. Yeah. And they've been such a delight. It's so much fun. Yeah. So they love to come back in September, this September. Yeah. But, uh, so Jack and I are, are emailing back and forth and I can't give them an affirmative yet because I don't mm-hmm. know what's going on because um, I want the keeper's house for the workers to stay because they're coming mm-hmm. from the mainland. Yeah. So they'll be staying at the keeper's house and working on the lighthouse. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah. So right now it's kind of up in the air, yeah. whether the house will be available or not. So, but okay. anyway, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. I, I'd forgotten that Jack had uh, stayed there and uh, yeah, he and I exchanged, we just came, exchanged emails a couple of days ago. He works oh, yeah. on articles for the U S lighthouse society oh, and other yes, bet, things I'll enough bet. and yeah. asked me questions. I don't necessarily know the answers, but he has, <laughs> so, asked me questions he's been at me really, cause he really wants me to get our tram going again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that it's, it's it's not going to. It's uh, down at the very base of the cliff. There used to be a big dock that was built, and the Coast Guard ship would come in, and mm-hmm. they would fill they would fill the railway car, and they winch it up over the hill. Well, that's all gone. Storms have ripped it out, and 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 physically, I can't do it. It's just it's just you know, there. yeah. But he would like to put the like to build a, a cart to to set on it, and uh, and I keep promising I'm going to give him the width of the of the, uh, the tracks. Hmm. And I keep forgetting, but, uh, but he keeps reminding me. So I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that's a, yeah. Sounds like so a good, I've got good... to do that the next time I go out. Yeah. Cool. So let's just talk for a few minutes. It may be another time we could do a more extensive talk about Machias Seal Island, but yeah, I that would be about... better because I've, I've only had one shift on Machias, right? So, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, January yeah. was my first shift. So, yeah. Uh, so I'm pretty new at it yet myself. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. maybe just a couple of general questions uh, mm-hmm. about it for now. Certainly. But Certainly. Uh, first of all, for, for people who aren't familiar with it, Machaya Seal Island is part of New Brunswick, officially part of New Brunswick, Canada, but it's about five miles off the northern Maine coast. And actually, I've been on the island uh, on one of the Puffin tours out of Cutler, Maine. Yes. Uh, yes. Andy Patterson, Captain Andy okay, Patterson yes. has been running those for many years now. Yep. Uh, Bold Coast uh, Charters, his company. And I believe there's also Puffin Tours that go from New Brunswick to, uh, to yep. Machias Seal Island. Yeah, and it is a, it's an important Puffin nesting colony, uh, not nesting Puffin colony among other birds and mm. uh, rare terns as well, I believe. Yes, yes. Yeah, yep. yeah. Razor bills, and, yep. Yeah, and that's got to be a big part of uh, life there is dealing with the the birds. So again, you're uh, kind of new there, but 
Uh, have you had any experience with that yet? With no, the... actually, it's uh, it's funny because I was there. Uh, we got there the 7th of January. I think it was uh -huh. the, ninth, the ninth or the 10th. I went for a walk and I come back with a puffin ache. Uh -huh. and, I, and, uh, <clears throat> and the light keeper I, I had the, the pleasure actually to stay there with is, uh, was Ralph Eldridge, who's been a light keeper for, I think, 53 years since uh, started wow. in Partridge Island. He's got a, a tremendous career as a light keeper. He's, he's somebody I should talk to. Yeah. He's the, well, he's the principal keeper, mm -hmm. you know, he's the boss. And he, uh, he started on Machias in 1996, mm -hmm. still there. So, uh, yeah, Ralph is, uh, so I showed it to him. I said, is this a puff and egg, Ralph? And he just looked and smiled. And goes, yes, it is. So get it out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Put it back. <laughs> yeah. It's one that was obviously it was discarded, uh, in the spring, but, wow. But like I say, it would change when I was there. Um, the only visitors we have were the Coast Guard. They come down and and we put in a gorgeous, gorgeous new light in the in the tower. And I was so privileged to be part of that. You know, mm -hmm. we have a two hundred year old light station, and uh, and of course, yeah, it's, uh, it's a uh, an LED uh, light. It was made by MSM in uh, Valencia, Spain. Mm -hmm. And it's um, actually I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. It's a it's a three tier. It's uh, called an MBR-400 rotator, mm -hmm. and it's just it just looks like a tube full of diamonds when it's going. It's an 18.5 nautical mile light. Wow. Um, yeah, 63,000 lumens. Yeah. And it's, just, it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I had the privilege of helping the guys put that in. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's incredible. It's got an incredible sweep to it. It's hot and snow, and it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a silly grin for days, I know. <laughs> yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's got to be an amazing place to spend time. And uh, you're probably looking forward to the, some of the shifts out there in the warmer months. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, they're all different. Depends on obviously the time of year, but I'd love to get there when the, when the, when the puffins start to come ashore, you know, when the students arrive in the visitor's house and, and, uh, and I've worked, uh, I've been a volunteer at the Grand Manan Whale and Seabird Research Station since 1982 mm -hmm. so i'm so used to dealing with uh, research and doing field work and and uh i think i would like to i, I guess uh um if if i want to i can certainly help them out and uh, yeah. i think i would enjoy doing that mm -hmm. you know when i'm not on watch it would be it would be great fun to do that so yeah yeah, yeah. so it'd be, it'd be fun well, I don't need to tell you to be careful uh, around the the turns and nesting season. Yeah, when yeah. I was there, I can't. Yeah. This is twenty years ago that I was actually mm -hmm. on the island, but it was nesting season, and uh, the turns were dive bombing us. And yes. Andy Patterson, the captain, who took us out, told, gave I think he gave out sticks so everybody could hold a stick over their head that's supposed to sort of ward off the the turns. And we yes. were walking around with holding sticks like this up in the air. And uh, but this one woman, uh, I don't know if she had lowered her stick or what happened, but she got she got pecked pretty good in her, her yep. head. Yeah, and I've heard that. She was I've okay, heard. but you know, a head wound will bleed a lot. Oh, um, sure will. Yeah, she was she was fine, but it was a little little scary. But yeah. um, so yes, you, you gotta, gotta watch yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just so, be yeah. careful. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yes. but you know that you have a lot of experience. Yes, with yes, that. I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I would like to talk more about that. Maybe at length, maybe after you've had some time, uh, you know, more time. Out yeah, there. absolutely. That's uh, I'm, I'm right now I'm, I'm on as casual. So uh, they tell me I'll get three months uh, this year on the Island, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. I really look forward to that. And uh, that gives me lots of time to do my other duties here, especially with a major project that's going on with Swallowtail. I really feel I should be around. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, maybe down the road later on, perhaps I can be full time. Maybe I can stay casual. You know, right now I'm not too concerned. I just it's such a privilege to be uh, to be chosen to be able to do it. It's, it's great. You know, and yeah. it's a wonderful helicopter ride. Well, lighthouse keepers are uh, uh, almost extinct at this point. So That's you're right. you're one of a a rare breed. Uh, Canada having uh, fifty something. I forget the exact number. Uh, mm -hmm. Keepers uh, still active at these stations, almost yes. all on the west coast. Yes, uh, yes. There's yep. There's well, there's twenty five, I believe, in the east coast because there's there? a lot. Yeah, there's a lot in Newfoundland. Okay, I thought I well. Actually, I actually took a photograph uh, inside of our keeper's house at Machias, mm -hmm. and there's Canadian Coast Guard 2018 
and it shows Newfoundland, Labrador, uh, Cape Breton, uh, PEI, and New Brunswick, and it shows right. all it shows all the manned stations. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, they're mostly in uh, British Columbia mostly, and Newfoundland. In, Newf- in Newfoundland, yes. Yeah. yeah, and then you've got the one in New Brunswick. Yeah. Uh, you've got the one in New Brunswick, station. which makes twenty five. I counted them just before the podcast. Actually, on the east coast. Yeah. yeah on the east coast. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Which was more than I thought. It right, was, right. I for, I'd forgotten. I thought it was a more, uh, you know, way towards the the west coast. Yep, I I agree that there's no, there's actually twenty. Uh, five, there's uh, there's what they call five uh, isolated uh, stations in Newfoundland uh, mm-hmm. uh, that you would have to take a helicopter to that they consider isolated, like yeah. uh, Magias. Yep. Yeah, the U.S. Lighthouse Society did a tour to Newfoundland last year. I wish I could have gone on that. I oh, have not that's been a big there. One. Yeah, that's a big yeah, one. Yeah, that, that would, would take. Yeah. Love yeah. to see that. that yeah, area. my wife and I spent eight days there uh, and uh, looking at lighthouses. Yeah. So again, Ken, I hope we can do this again. And I, I do want to talk more about Machias Seal Island somewhere down the road. But and I also want to check up on what's going on with Swallowtail Absolutely. Maybe in a, a few Absolutely. months or so. Yep. But I have one more question for you for now. OK, and this, okay. Is, this is this is for bonus points. OK, okay. <laughs> so get ready here. The question is what has, and again, this can be this can be more than one thing. It doesn't have to be just one thing. But what has been your favorite thing? or things about your involvement with the lighthouses of New Brunswick over the years? Oh, discovering new things has been great. Every lighthouse you go in is so unique. I'm fortunate enough that I have a key that allows me to go into these lighthouses. I don't know if I should say this aloud, but I'm going to. I have a Coast Guard. No, I have it. And and I don't go in a lighthouse unless I have their permission. Mm-hmm. Every one of them is unique, uh, Jeremy. Uh, along the St. John River, I was in a bunch last spring. And uh, and come across one with with an original cast iron uh, cupola, you know it's that it's the people that I've met. They're very passionate people. Uh, even even our uh, our Coast Guard guys that that are working on the, the horns and the lights, and uh, you know um, we had a little issue with uh, with Long Eddie's uh, uh, foghorn. Uh, the person beside who bought the keeper's house, and well, let's just say that for yeah for for uh political reasons we'll just say that there were some complaints about the uh the decibels and uh, that was brought up again about there's no need of it anymore because of the yeah so proactively um our supervisor uh, he uh, you know he said you know what let's move the horn the emitter let's move it down below Lori's deck and they actually took decibel readings at the at the end of uh the neighbor's uh, deck and it was uh, i can't remember it was 102 decibels mm-hmm. and then when the they sounded it down below it was like 68 decibels so mm-hmm. we quieted it down for her a lot but it still projects out over the water where it should um that's saving the light that's saving the, the the horn because enough complaints ottawa will say just shut it down and mm-hmm. that'll be it and that would be the end of the horn so uh everybody's happy um, and it's so nice to see the Coast Guard take that initiative to save that one, you know, yeah. and when you're working with people like that, it's, it's really cool. It is. Mm-hmm. You know? And I have been for, oh, for probably 10, 11 years now. And uh, I know the guys, I, I have all their phone numbers. They have mine. I do them favors. They do me favors. And it's just that camaraderie that I really, really enjoy. You know, and uh, yeah, and it's the history of the lights is just fantastic. And I can't just seem to get enough of it. You know, my basement now is starting to look like a lighthouse. I've got a T300 on top of my filing <laughs> cabinet. And my, I've got an air chime that's that's hanging on the wall that still works. I got, you know, I've got a, yeah, I got an old video graph that's in the middle of the floor. <laughs> you know, just, yeah. It's, yeah, just, yeah. Well. Yeah, this, uh, so I, I know it's probably not a it's not a, a single answer, but that that's what motivates me. I go in the lighthouse and I'm just in a great mood. Just yeah, I can yeah. be walking along, slugging along. As soon as I go inside, it's just it's yeah, they're they're, mm-hmm. they're wonderful. They really are. There's just so much history. There's so much character to them. They're uh, they're fantastic. They really are, and it's a real privilege to do anything with them. You know, a lot of people can you know it might be a difficult job, but on a lighthouse it's not. You know, it's, it really is. It's a, it's, it's a great pleasure to be able to, to restore them and bring them back to their former glory. It's, it's great. Yeah. Uh, the one at, uh, at uh, Machias, when I first went in that, that was built in 1909. And it has the original cast iron. It has cast iron steps, you know, and it's just, it's beautiful. Cast iron windows, 
No, I mean, that's that's fantastic. It really is. I just go up and it's got a concrete ledge and the inside of the cupola. And I go up there and make phone calls with the light going around. And it just doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> Great. It really is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's great to hear the appreciation you have for these these places, the love you have for it. That, that's certainly apparent, and you've you've done so much for the lighthouses in that area. As I say, it's, it really has been such a pleasure. Um, I like to tell a lot of people. They say, "Why do you do this? You do this for free." And I tell them, "I got a wire burn off. Right? It's just not uh, <laughs> just something wrong." But it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I always warn people about the lighthouse bug. It's like a, yes, a, a good yes. contagious disease. But because yeah, there is such a thing. There really is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It gets in your blood. It absolutely it does. does. It does. Absolutely. Yeah. It's absolutely. the lighthouses themselves. It's the places, yeah. uh, the places around them. And yeah, it's the whole sure. the whole package for sure. It sure so, is. It sure yeah. is. Well, uh, Ken Ingersoll, it's really, really great talking with you today. I'm glad we we're able to to chat and uh definitely wanna uh, do it again. There's going to be plenty to talk about down the road with the work For happening sure. at Swallowtail and with Absolutely. your upcoming yep. season at Machaya Seal Island. So let's uh, continue this uh, down the road. But for right now, I just uh, thank you so much, Ken. It's my pleasure. It really is. I look forward to talking to you again, for sure. And maybe right. someday we can meet in person and I can show show off my lighthouse. You can read more about the Swallowtail Keeper Society at swallowtaillighthouse.com. The Society also has a Facebook page. I really enjoy talking with Ken Ingersoll. He's uh, one of those people, kind of like my friends uh, Bob Trapani and Chris Mills, who are interested in all aspects of lighthouses, uh, history, technology of the lights and fog signals, uh, their importance to navigation, uh, really from all angles. Ken is also a great ambassador for Grand Manan. As I mentioned earlier, I hope to visit him at Swallowtail uh, in October with the U.S. Lighthouse Society tour. I hope that happens. I also want to mention that I'll be leading a U.S. LHS, U.S. Lighthouse Society tour of Long Island, New York, this May 13th to the 20th. We will be visiting about 15 lighthouses and several museums, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm sure we'll have some uh, old friends on the tour and some new friends as well. So go to uslhs.org to learn more about that tour and the other ones coming up. By the way, New Brunswick Day is celebrated on the first Monday in August each year. Residents across the province get together for musical performances, sports tournaments, cake cutting, and more, all done to foster the spirit of togetherness. A number of New Brunswick tourism websites have plenty of information about the New Brunswick Day activities. Sounds good to me. I'd love mm -hmm. to be there for that. Uh, in the next two episodes of Lighthearted, we'll be doing something different. My friend Bob Trapani, uh, who I just mentioned a minute ago, executive director of the American Lighthouse Foundation, recently interviewed me <laughs> about my lighthouse career going back to the 1980s. It was a little scary, but it turned <laughs> out to be fun. And we'll hear it over the next two weeks, and you'll be taking part in uh, the uh, the recordings for those, those shows as well. Yes, so. looking forward to it. Well, thanks to everyone associated with the U.S. Lighthouse Society. To learn more about the tours, preservation grants, the passport program, and everything else the Society offers, check out uslhs.org. Any quotes before we sign off, Cindy? Yes. In his song, Into the Mystic, Van Morrison wrote, quote, Smell the sea and feel the sky. Let your soul and spirit fly, unquote. Yeah, and uh, I would say lighthouses are a great place to do that. As always, to our regular listeners and our new ones, thank you so much for listening and keep a good light. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine